Rational Reasons for Theism. That's Gohan in Texas. Oh, good old Gohan. It's been a minute. All right. Let's talk with Gohan and see if he gets himself blocked again. Hey, Gohan, how are you doing today? Good. How about you guys? They're doing good. good. Excited to talk to you again. It's been a hot minute. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Been, uh, called back in a good, I think it's been over a year, but yeah. You guys been doing good? Yeah, we've been hanging in there, still going mm -hmm. strong. Mm -hmm. uh, what can we help you with today? What is your reason for calling in? So uh, w one of my uh, arguments for, well, one of my main reasons for being a theist is the idea of rationality. And um, if I was to kind of become an atheist, this would be one thing that would have to be toppled for me pretty quick. Um, well, if you're just, mm -hmm. okay, uh, you're gonna have to uh, sell me on that one. Sure, sure. Um, just like a quick summary is like uh, I see two options for rationality. One is uh, we kind of just um, came from a long line of um, cause and effect that kind of gave us our mind which okay. doesn't really leave much room for rationality or there's a uh, somebody or something that kind of gave us the ab ability to have free will and logically think, which is something not coming from just a long line of cause and effect. Why do you think those are mutually exclusive? Why couldn't we have the ability to um, have free will and logic naturally without intervention? That, that's a fair question. Uh, I would say, like, um, if we are really just a long line of cause and effect with no input from anything else, that, that would kind of make our thinking more of reactions, chemical reactions inside our brain, which we don't have control over. And then So the reason... So I, what I'm sensing course, here... And, and let me know if I'm if I'm wrong. Your reason for wanting to remain a theist is more about a, a concern that you might not have free will otherwise. Uh, pre pretty close. Uh, it's not, it's not like that's why I want to remain a theist. That is one reason I am a theist. So like, whether I'm oh, oh 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 okay. So your your free will proves theism. All right, prove free will. Yeah, I, I would say that would be a pretty good summary of my stance. Um, okay, cool. And so now, now you're kind of, so you're you're asking me to uh, prove free will. Well, if you're going to use free will as the reason you believe in a god, then we need to agree that we have free will for you to continue to make that argument. And I'm not exactly convinced of that. So convince us about free will, I guess. Johnny, what do you think? Yeah, that's exactly right. Convince us that free will exists. I recently read. Um, been on a reading spree lately and the what you just started talking about reminded me of two books that i just recently read and you might consider checking it out yourself uh, both are by dan dennett from bacteria to bach and back which talks about how a cognitive mind can develop how there can be uh how nature can create an intelligent creature an intelligent design without a designer and then elbow room which talks all about the nature of free will and whether we have it and um, to what extent we may or may not have it. So before you form opinions about having free will, before you form opinions and dig too much in the dirt about um, where our minds come from, you might want to look into a book like this, either by Dan Dennett or other, or other thinkers and, and writers to challenge your preconceived notions. Because after reading this, I was, there's a lot of questions that I still have need answers to that I'm probably not going to get unless I go get a PhD in neuroscience. Yeah, uh, Gohan, yeah. what what yeah, research I'm, have you done? So uh, I know of uh, Dennett's book from Bacteria to Bach. I haven't read it, but uh, there's a lot of uh, good debate shows to watch. So I've wa uh, watched him explain the book, which is, it's not the same as reading it, but kind of watching the author explain this book in a debate is pretty close to it. And I definitely remain unconvinced of his viewpoint after that, 
Um, I would say there's another book that you guys might want to check out. It's from an atheist as well. His name is uh, Thomas Nagel. Uh, have you guys heard of him? I have. He's a pretty big atheist in some New York university. Um, he wrote a book back in, I think, like 2010, 2012, something like that. Um, it's called Mind and Cosmos. Uh, and then it's got a subtitle saying, like, how the neo-Darwinian view of the of nature is almost certainly false. And that is more about how uh, the idea of rationality cannot come from a purely naturalistic standpoint. Okay, but again, we're kind of, they, thank you for that answer. I did ask what research you did. You gave me a book. That's awesome. But this conversation is not answering the question that I asked initially, which is, no. can you prove free will to me? Because I am not convinced we have it. And so saying, well, obviously we have free will, therefore God, the, that first part kind of falls on its face before we even get to the God question. So how have you become convinced that you have free will? So uh, I, I know I'm kind of basing this call off of rationality, but uh, I, I think within the idea of rationality, there's a like subcategory of free will. So I think okay. if you don't have free will, you cannot be rational. If you don't have the ability to choose or go back and examine things, there's no way to be rational, and all that takes is free will. So as long as you can examine things rationally, that's evidence for free will by itself. Otherwise, why would I, if what, what my brain is going, what's going on in my brain is just... Well, you, you, you gave... Why would I trust it? Well, no, you gave two two examples of what, what thought processes and rationality could be. You said either we have free will or it's chemical reactions in the brain that we have no control over. I'm not necessarily tied to the idea that we have control over our rationality to a certain extent. Sure, probably we can, you know, move it in one direction or another based on the research we put into our heads, but at a certain part at a certain point it is actually automatic. And so you you gave us an example of what a thought process would look like without free will, which is just chemicals firing in the brain, those those neurons, those those synapses. So my question is how do you know it's not that that's happening? How do you know that it's something else? Yeah, I uh, one thing for sure is I, I minored in math, and there was a couple of classes where I can tell you for sure it was not natural. Things did not just come to me. You have to rationally think of it. It's not just synapses firing. It create it requires thought into uh, logical steps, and that is not just natural synapses firing. Uh, go, go ahead. You oh. you've heard you've heard yeah. of and. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. I thought you were stopping. Go ahead. Please continue. Here, Finish here. your thought. Oh, pretty much I was stopped. Oh, okay. No, I was pretty much stopped. You, you can go ahead. All right. Um, I don't have a citation to give you right now, but you've heard of these studies, these reports, uh, scientific experiments where people have made decisions. They, they do like a, an examination of the brain, do a scan of the brain, and they show that a decision has been made before the person is aware of the decision. Yeah. Right. So you've heard of that before, and yet you say that you know that thinking was going on while you were taking your math courses, that you had to sit down and cogitate, right? How do you know that there wasn't some other aspect of your brain that was doing the thinking and then at some point made you aware of what the solution was through some process? Yeah, so uh, I, I also became a physical therapist and I did some studies uh, I did actually look at that study, and uh, it's not necessarily that the, uh, the the scan just showed that there was activity before they realized the decision was made. It doesn't mean that the decision uh, was already made before they realized it. So just because there's activity in that part of the brain didn't mean for sure that the decision was already made. No, but it certainly points us closer to one version of this than the other, right? There, if, if your concern is that your brain is making decisions without you and we're seeing the brain light up before you make a decision, then that kind of points in that direction. At the very least, could you well, say that I mean, it it's, it's undetermined? Any, any 
any amount of thought requires decision before you realize it. You have to think through. So if there's a spot on the brain that lights up before you realize made, you made your decision, that could very well be just you thinking on your way to coming to a decision. Well, you're talking about very well. Again, you've reached conclusions that neuroscientists are just starting to understand in any kind of a useful way. You've reached a conclusion that the experts in the field that dedicate their entire lives and will continue to do so and generations will continue to develop the science um, are going to be working on this problem. But you've reached a conclusion that to your satisfaction is uh, decided. Um, um, I'm I'm sorry, but uh, I, I, it was me that I was saying that I proved this. I was saying that it's the truth. Uh, you're breaking up pretty badly. Uh oh. I'm sorry. Can, is this any better? That's better. That's yeah. that's better. Get okay. out of the tunnel. Um, <laughs> so I, I wasn't trying to say that the study shows that you were thinking before you made your decision. It sounded like you guys were saying before the decision was made, before you realized it, the decision was already made. I was just showing that that's not necessarily what it shows. You right. Know, let, Here, let, here's the okay. I, I want to cut to the chaser because we do yeah. want to move on. Um, Gohan, the the initial issue I have with this line of reasoning is that I am not convinced that we have free will. I have not seen enough on either direction to prove to me one way or the other. And so it's something as flimsy as that as a basis for an argument about something as big and important as a god, especially the god I believe you believe in from prior conversations. That feels mm -hmm. like kind of building a house on sand, isn't it? Kind of like building your house on, on that sandy foundation. It, it's not going to hold up to somebody who doesn't have that same strong conviction of free will. So maybe uh, this was a good conversation. Uh, I think we managed to keep it civil. We had a you know good couple of minutes here. So if you want to call in again, you are welcome to. I'm happy to have you on again. Uh, maybe either come with a, a better explanation about free will rather than just I define rationality as necessarily including it, and or okay. uh, talk about uh, a God claim without that particular component, because I can tell you we're just going to get hung up on that um, and not really be able to move forward. So happy to hear from you again. Uh, but this particular argument needs a lot more time to kind of build out, I think. Well, that, that sounds fair enough. And before I go, can I just leave you guys with a question? Uh, you can. We will probably let you off the hook and answer it off yeah. live. But sure, that's, go for it. That's more than fair. Yeah, so uh, you, you were kind of saying that it seems bad to build such a big thing about God on such a unfound uh, argument as free will. But then I, I would probably turn that around. If we substitute the big thing for God for rationality, well, what do you make your basis for rationality on if it's not just um, cause and effect going on in the brain? Well, I never said that it wasn't just cause and effect going on in the brain. It could very well be. So I was, I was just wondering what you guys kind of base your rationality on. And I understand there's a bigger show than just me calling in so i appreciate the time and absolutely yeah call back with that question we can have that conversation for sure all Thanks, right all right thank you guys thank you the you know can i say mm -hmm. something something Go that i was it. thinking something from the beginning of the conversation mm -hmm. um go and talked about watching debates online or in person and that being not quite as good as reading a book or doing studies i'm not I I'm encourage quite, everyone, yeah, I'm I encourage everyone to go out there and watch your debates. But um, really, doing the research is is I think more important than watching debates because everything gets clipped, everything gets shortened and abbreviated, and it's bullet points. Mm -hmm. And reading a book isn't even enough, really, because people spend their entire lives trying to understand things, dedicate their their postgraduate work to to fleshing out skeletons that they've formed in their in their undergrad and graduate degrees. So. Um, understand that the farther you get away from being on the ground doing the research, the farther away you're going to get toward a, a properly resolved understanding of what the science is. 
Absolutely. I fully agree with you. I'm glad you jumped on that because I was thinking the same thing. It is absolutely, I, I love that Gohan knew who you were talking about, what you were talking about. And honestly, like, Dennett, Dennett's my man, last of the four horsemen, in my opinion. But uh, yeah, I think uh, I, I think it's it's useful to have a basic conception of these things, at least. But holding up a YouTube video against, you know, not only someone who has read a book, but maybe somebody who has studied this personally, you know, in, in, in school and in, in their job. There, there are levels of this and reaching level one doesn't qualify you to make claims about level five or six, if that makes sense. It's a, I mean, it's a start. It's, it's a way to pique your curiosity to see if something. Oh, sounds, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And you, you only have so many hours in a day. 